guess who's back? <laughs> Welcome back to some history with Mr. Otway. And this lesson is all about after 1066. You've done the Battle of Hastings, but this is how did William manage to control a country that didn't really want him after 1066? And it wasn't an easy job, but he managed to do it. What you need to write down in your book, as it says on the instructions, you need to put the title, Why Was William Able to Keep Control? And you need to put the four different things I'm going to talk about. And the first, castles. If William had pyjamas, I don't think they did at that time, but maybe they did. If he did, then if he could, his pyjamas would have castles on them. Now, obviously, I'm joking there. But what I'm trying to say is William loved castles. Castles were an important way for William to keep control of England. And the thing is, the Anglo-Saxons had not come across castles before. They were a new thing. And so when William brought these castles over, and they were wooden castles, they were called Mott and Bailey castles. We'll do about them. Um, but these castles, they weren't used to the Anglo-Saxons. They weren't used to fighting against them. They had no technology to defeat these Mott and Bailey castles that William brought over. So what he did, as he was going around the country, usually to deal with rebels trying to attack him, William would build castles as he went along at spaced intervals. So there was always somewhere that his army could hide if they're outnumbered by rebels until reinforcements arrived. And although there were many, many rebellions to try to get rid of William, only one ever managed to defeat a castle. Um, and, and William turned up and got rid of them anyway himself um, and defeated that rebellion. So it tells you... You know, the castles were quite important because the Anglo-Saxons struggled to have the technology to defeat castles. And he loved them. Loads of them. Number two. Um, the rebels didn't really work together. There was lots of different rebellions. So there was two main rebellions in the north. There was a rebellion in the Midlands. There was a rebellion over in uh, towards Norwich in East Anglia. There was a rebellion near Wales. They were all rebellions breaking out in different areas at different times. Now, there is an argument that if all those rebels joined together and rebelled at once, it would have been too much for William to handle. But they didn't work together and they didn't all rebel at once and they didn't all rebel together. So that meant William could defeat one rebellion and defeat the other rebellion and, and leave it between because they were attacking at the same time or together. The fourth reason, William was bold and ruthless. Ruthless is a new word, perhaps. Bold is like, a bit like brave. You're going to do it, you're going to sort it out. Ruthless is like, once you have sorted it out, you're pretty mean with what you do. And the thing is, whenever a rebellion was there, William didn't go, eh, forget it, let somebody else deal with it. Instead, William made sure he got his army together himself went himself and dealt with the rebellion. And as soon as somebody heard, huh, William's coming, very often the rebels would run away before William got there because they know what he used to do. For example, there was a rebel called... Um, oh, what was he called? There was a rebel, anyway. His name will pop into my head. Um, and William caught that rebel and all of the people who were rebelling with him. And what he did, once he defeated them, so they defeated, they finished, the rebellion's over. But as a warning to anybody else, he got all the rebels and either got a little knife, popped their eyes out, or got a little knife, chopped their bits off. Um, and that's how they had to live for the rest of their lives, blind or without that. Um, and that, that would serve as a warning. So other people think, oh, well, I don't like William, I'm going to... Oh, he did what? Oh, I don't fancy rebelling. Because William went there himself, dealt with things himself. He was so feared because he was such a successful warrior. And he was so ruthless with his punishments when he did catch the rebels that people didn't want to do it anymore. Um, I'm, trying, I'm getting really annoyed about that. So. Uh, a rebellion... Against William East Anglia, what was he called? Hereward the Wake, that's the one. I've talked about him loads of times. Anyway, on to the last reason, and that was 
all of the powerful, all of the most powerful Anglo-Saxons, and really the most powerful Anglo-Saxons were the Godwin family, they'd all died in 1066. Harold Godwinson, Tostig Godwinson, their brothers, Gerth, Leafwine Godwinson. There's a couple of others, but they were a bit young. Um, they managed to run away to Ireland. They did come back and tried to rebel, but they weren't powerful enough. All of the powerful people who could have rebelled against William, well, they weren't around anymore, or they weren't available to rebel. So, rewind at the end of this video if there's any bits you need to go over again, because you need to write down, basically, all of these different titles. We'll start from the start. One, you have to write down, how did castles help William to keep control? Use this meant that in your answer. <coughs> <coughs> How did the rebels not working together help William to keep control? Use this meant that in your answer. Use them connectives. Uh, William was bold and ruthless. You can even give an example, Hereward the Wake. How did that help William to keep control? Use this meant that. And finally, that there were no powerful Saxon leaders, Anglo-Saxon leaders, left to lead a rebellion. Um, and that would make the opposition William was facing a lot weaker. It'd be like, it'd be like Manchester United winning against, well, Bradford City, or Manchester City beating Bradford City. It's not that impressive because Bradford City, who I support, by the way, aren't a very good football team and Manchester City are. Well, that's what William had. It was like William was Manchester City and he kept having to fight, fight against Bradford City. So he was likely to win. But if there'd have been a really good Anglo-Saxon leader, like if Man City were playing Real Madrid or Barcelona or Juventus or someone like that, then it's much harder to defeat them. And, but there wasn't that powerful Anglo-Saxon leader left because they'd all died in 1066. There we go. Once you've written down all of the things and the definitions of why those things were all important, we're going to learn some facts to go with that from a Quizlet and maybe another little video to help you see things as they are. Oh, it's good to be back. What a class.